Weather and life both change quickly. Do you have a farm estate plan? You need to learn the best option to help your family avoid or minimize federal estate taxes and other costs. I'm Brad Swenson, President of Swenson Investments and Commodities. We work confidentially with farmers, ranchers, and advisors to help develop the best farm estate plan. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to discuss organic matter nutrient release. So first of all, what is organic matter? Well, organic matter is basically decaying plants or animal residue that are out in your field. And when you think about your soil, it's not just pieces of dirt. Those little pieces of soil have lots of things. They have lots of living things around them, and those living things need some organic material in order to have a home to survive on. Okay, but let's try to keep this simple here. What we're talking about is with that organic matter, the decaying plant and animal residue that's in the ground, when that decays, that actually releases nutrients for future crops. So here's the general range of what a farmer can get. If the farmer has an organic matter percentage of, let's call it, 3% in his soil. For each one of those 3%, for every percent of organic matter he's got, he's going to get roughly 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen each and every year for free released from that organic matter, 4 to 7 pounds of phosphate, and 2 to 3 pounds of sulfur. So in other words, you multiply each one of those numbers I just gave you times 3, and there are a lot of nutrients out there. If you look at the cost of fertilizer today, and you start talking about 60 to 90 pounds of free nitrogen, that's worth a whole bunch of money. Well, it certainly is, and Brandon also leads to a little bit of confusion, let's just say, from our non-farmers out there. And we look at, let's say, a grassy ditch along the side of a road, and you say, well, wait a minute, nobody fertilizes that, yet there's grass that comes up every year. You know, it may not be the greatest grass in the world, it doesn't look as good as a wheat field right next to it or something like that, but grass still grows. Well, yeah, it does. You know, there's a lot of organic material in that soil as the decaying grass from previous years breaks down. It releases some fertility. Now, it's not enough to have this fantastic crop, but it is enough for that grass to grow each year. You may get a cutting or two off of that and a little bit of hay. But if you were fertilizing that, if you actually put on a few more nutrients, a little bit more plant food out there, how important is that? That's why we say to farmers, you know, you have to increase the organic material in your soil. Yes, you can pay for fertility out there, but if you can get your soils to produce more of the food they need themselves, that's really important. Well, it is important to have a lot of nutrients, but it's also important to have water in your soils. And for each percent of organic matter, you'll have about 4% more water holding capacity in the soil. So if you had, let's say, 3% more organic matter that you could build that soil up over time, that'd be about 12% more water that your soil could hold. That sounds like a big deal, doesn't it? So it's not just important to have nutrients out there, it's also important to have water, and that's why we talk so much with farmers about organic matter in their soils. Well, organic matter in your soils is important, and so is weed control, especially if you have a weed like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 